Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting. And today we're gonna answer one of those questions that I see all the time on social media. I see people ask this a lot. And I wanna steer you to the answer so that hopefully you don't have to just ask on social media all the time. Granted, I know there are tons of things I answer in videos very pointedly that you could find with a simple search that people just go to social media groups and whatnot and ask anyways. Um, and they get basically the same answer because they're fairly black and white topics. Um, but this one's not, okay? So a lot of times people are like, hey, you know, for better or for worse, I'm looking at buying some cheap lights on Amazon from, you know, whatever the cheap light manufacturer of the day is, because there's one currently that, you know, as, as it goes and as I've been predicting since the beginning, you know, they started off, they did a ton of advertising. People were like, oh, this brand's amazing. You know, it's kind of like, um, it sounds something like a, uh, building outside of your house, um, is, is the name of the brand. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that went on for a little while. You know, this company continues to pump out advertising, kind of uh, getting people buying their products. Now that we're a year or two into it, when people ask about this company online and the experiences we've seen from customers, which this is what happens when you buy really cheap lights, is that um, they're unhappy with the quality over the long term. Well, am I surprised? No. But let's get back to the point. So you're buying cheap lights uh, that have DMX and you go, hey, Will this work with the lighting console or software I have? So we're going to answer a couple questions uh, really well, actually, in this video. Um, and the first is that question, will this work with the console or software that I have? The next question is, how do I get it in my console or software if it's not already in there? And then the last kind of part of this question is, uh, can I make it myself? When it comes down to it, at a physical, you know, at a technological, pure technological level, if a light uses DMX and a console sends out DMX, they can work together. Now, there's a couple caveats to it, okay? Um, you know, depending on what console and what light you have, uh, does the console or software support all the features the light has? Because yes, it can send out the data, but for example, say you've got a fixture that has a bunch of different lenses on it, okay? This this is not a multi-cell fixture with individual pixel control, but many, many do have individual pixel control of each cell. So let's pretend it does, okay? Does my console or controller support the DMX modes that use all of those zones, okay? Something to think about. Um, because if the console or controller that you're using doesn't support being able to work with those zones individually, then you're gonna have to use a mode that doesn't utilize those zones and you may consider moving to something else if that feature is important to you, okay? Um, so that answers question one right off the bat real quick, real easy, right? If the light has DMX and the console puts out DMX or the software, or whatever it is, on a technical basis, they can work together. Okay. And most of the time you can get them to work together, um, barring, you know, saying, okay, you know, does this console have the capabilities to do multiple cells? You know, most software consoles these days can work with things like pan or tilt or color, um, not at a fader based level, but, but at, you know, kind of a, a value based level where, um, it's, it's not more or less, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it's whatever was played most recently is what comes out of the console. So that's less of a concern these days than it used to be. Um, and so that's like the second part is, okay, does the console or software that I have, do the features, the way it program, does it jive with the light that I have? Once you're past that, all that you need is what's called a fixture profile, okay? And when you have uh, no-name type lights, um, there's a couple ways to go about this. The first is, simply put, um, when you go buy a light that's kind of a generic light, if it's a PAR, if it's a wash light, something non-moving that just has colors, etc., chances are there is a simple mode that may give you all the control you need that's already in your console, just not under the, the brand name that you purchased the light under, right? You know, if it's an RGB PAR that has red, green, and blue, and maybe there's a mode with red, green, and blue and a master intensity, pretty much any software or console 
is going to have a section called generic and there will be an RGB or an RGB with an intensity. Uh, sometimes you can get an RGB with a virtual dimmer so that you can have intensity control, even if the DMX channels for the light doesn't, um, because ultimately that's figure outable. Um, but, um, regardless it, that's, you know, it's very important to, uh, to, to look there first, because one of the things I see is people go, Oh, but, but I, I need to have in my console, you know, the same named fixture as what I have for it to work properly. And that's just not the case. Even with moving heads, you know, you're going to have like a Mac or a wash style moving head that tons of these companies sell. A lot of them have a 16 channel mode. Generally, they use the exact same channels. And so you can find one that's under a different brand or something. It may line up perfectly and be fine. Or maybe it lines up and it's like 90% of the way there. And one or two of the channels is a little funky, but you can live with it. Okay, um, so that's kind of option two, especially if you're under the gun, if you've got a gig that's got to happen today and you need a fixture, uh, starting to look for alternatives can be really great. And actually, um, something that you can use, there are some tools for this. Um, there's one that used to be called the Onyx Fixture Finder. And it's still there, actually, at onyxfixturefinder.com. Um, the one downside to this site is basically the current Onyx library that they transitioned over to after Onyx version 4.4 um, is encrypted. And so the fixture finder can't read the channels. But it's still a really great way for it to be able, for you to be able to go, hey, my light has six, seven, eight, you know, eight channels. Here's what some of them are. And then, and then, it lists out all of the fixtures that match those. You don't have to fill in all the channels and really helps. I actually have a video from a few years ago that covers how to use the fixture finder. Check it out here. Okay. Um, so that can be super helpful, especially with kind of generic -y fixtures because like often it's a fixture that has the same channels under other brand names. It's going to work fine and you can get it quick, right? Um, the downside is this um, was for the Onyx library in version 4.4. It's a few years old now. Um, it doesn't uh, represent the current Onyx library. And if you're in another console, um, these it will give you names to search for to see if they're there. But you're kind of you're, you're not shooting in the dark completely. But you know it's it's like you you'll have a list of ten names and how many of these are in the console or software you have, right? Um, maybe few, maybe not many. Okay. So the next thing and and really the best thing to do, um, though. <laughs> I kind of sit on the edge with kind of generic fixtures because they often will change the DMX channels, you know, between different batches or they'll go out of business and a new one will come up. But with most fixtures, like it's generally a good idea if your console allows you to request a fixture profile and they do them in a timely manner, um, which, you know, I know that's vague. Um, some of these consoles, I'm just going to tell you. It takes months to get the fixture created unless you know somebody, right? Um, the consoles that we choose to to orient ourselves with, such as Onyx, Light Shark, um, you know, Light Key, etc., they'll be very transparent about how quick it takes. Onyx and Light Shark are very fast. Light Key a little bit slower, you know, but um, but at the end of the day, they generally publish how long it takes. You can decide if you have that time or not to wait for it, right? Um, and so, you know, requesting a profile, if it's, it's so tough when it's kind of a generic manufacturer because they change so often, but like requesting a fixture is generally helpful because then they build it. And it's not that somebody is sitting in an office looking at all the DMX channels and entering them all by scratch. Okay. When people at these companies are building fixture profiles, they generally are probably going to take something fairly similar, copy it and modify it. So, um, if you're sure if the fixture has a lot of modes, it can get complicated. It, it, you know, it can take them some time, but a lot of times it doesn't. Okay. Um, requesting does help the community helps everybody because anybody in the future that buys this light, as long as the no name manufacturer doesn't change the channels, um, it's going to work and, and it's going to be in there for people in the future, not just you. Okay. Uh, which brings me to the last point, um, consoles with fixture builders, many consoles or software have fixture builders. Some are better than others. Some can make your console crash. Some are just annoying to use, um, but can get the job done and others are amazing. Okay. 
Um, if your console has a fixture builder, you can build the fixture. Okay. And when it comes down to generic fixtures, I generally am like, just go do it because they're going to change the DMX channels in six months or go out of business or whatever. And so it's not worth requesting a fixture like it is from a brand that's going to be around for a long time. Right. Um, and so, uh, I, I'm, you know, if it's something where you just go, you know what, I'm just going to build it. It often doesn't take that long. It depends how many channels the light has, how complicated it is, but generally you can build lights fairly quickly and then you'll have that fixture file. So that is how to know and how to figure out how to get a light into a console if it's not there. Again, as I kind of mentioned before, the process for requesting a fixture is going to be specific to every console, right? They're all different as to what the process is. If you fill out a form, if you send somebody an email, if you post on a forum, if you fill out, uh, if you log into some kind of website and fill out a request, they're all different. And the times that it takes is all dependent on the individual console. Okay. So that's really important to be aware of the console or software you use may be quick. They may be slow. They may be somewhere in between. I don't know. So hopefully this helps you today to be able to figure this out so that if you're trying to make a generic light work with your lighting console, you can and you can get it working and you can go on to making great events. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to lighting, grab my free guide. It's the three things I really uh, want you to know before you begin with lighting. And it's actually personalized. There's actually four free guides so that you go to the one that's most oriented to the type of lighting you do. Check that out at learnstagelighting.com. And we will see you guys in our next video. Thanks.